going to be a DPC video. It's funny, there's some cars racing around. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Um, what I want to talk about is kind of how to transmute triggering, like feeling triggered, how to see the message within triggers, and kind of some thoughts about healing from reactivity or like reactive attachment and things like that which um, in my own life you know recognizing that I have kind of a disorganized attachment style so a little bit of fearful a little bit of anxious and a little bit of reactive attachment and the more that I get into my healing work, the more I notice a bit of um, what's called complex CPTSD, which is PTSD from relationships, and usually it starts from early childhood and builds, because we tend to replay our childhood traumas in relationships until we become aware of it <laughs> and choose different behaviors, and um, oftentimes different relationships depending on whether or not the person that we're with is also... Uh, at a point in their journey to be aware that they can and really should uh, make different choices. But what I realized though, you know, it's it's funny, the words are so powerful and like take the, the term disorganized attachment and reactive attachment. Um, those words both, they kind of, um, they put a notch in the self-worth like disorganized attachment but me having ADHD like that's disorganization is is like kryptonite to me I, I am constantly disorganized to so to also be emotionally disorganized and disorganized in um, intimate and professional and familial relationships that's just like oh, ouch again you know another place that I'm not organized and reactive attachment is a, another one too that like to think about that being reactive it just it, it sounds aggressive even in its own way and we can often come across even as aggressive or dangerous or attacking when we are reactive um, and really the funny thing is both of them I think the better word for it is hypervigilance which actually I mean it's still not a fantastic word but it's more accurate. It provides a little more clarity. Um, like, when your emotional responses are disorganized, and when you find that you are often very reactive, if you think about it, the reason that you get reactive is because you're constantly taking the temperature of people around you. Um, and maybe not even consciously, like, you, you, like, look for it. Do you, are you regularly thinking about what sort of mood somebody might be in? Are you worried about whether or not they're going to take something personal that, that you do, either that's, that's good or bad? Um, do you question yourself about whether or not, like, saying something to them or not saying something to them is going to create some sort of conflict or drama? Um, are you worried about even doing positive things like taking a promotion or pursuing a career as a musician or expanding yourself in some way because you fear that you might leave somebody behind or they might feel left behind or uh, not as good as you, things like that. And when, when you can reasonably predict that conflict may, might occur, you know, do you, do you get more aggressive? Do you get reactive are you do you just kind of put yourself in a state where like well I know it's going to be a fight it's going to be conflict so I'm just going to push it away or I'm just going to say no I'm not going to play this game or I'm going to I'm going to back off or run away or vice versa I'm just going to blow it all up like that's that comes from just being exhausted from being hyper vigilant and a lot of that goes back to our childhoods, you know, and it, with, it, whether you had siblings or not, or big family or small family, um, if, especially if you were dealing with anybody that had, um, like, I'm going to say love addictions, sex addictions, money addictions, uh, drinking or alcohol addictions, things like that, the situation becomes so unpredictable, in fact, predictably unpredictable, that y you 
get trained to constantly be looking for how is the person feeling right now because at any moment that could change at any moment you might need to run and hide or you might need to be the aggressor or you might need to keep yourself quiet in moments when you really really want to speak up you, you don't know and that creates like a constant uh, survival mode and that's exhausting like it's like it's literally exhausting if you look it up it's exhausting on the adrenal glands it's exhausting on the brain it it puts us in overdrive we're not meant to be in survival mode all the time uh, but when we get trained into that early on then we don't we're often not even aware that we're doing it and then you know say you end up in a relationship with the potential to grow and you end up uh, realizing you know what these attachment traumas are and then you get hit with labels like anxious attachment fearful avoidant dismissive avoidant uh, disorganized attachment reactive attachment or maybe uh, people you know that you, you deal with uh, mental health labels PTSD CPTSD um, or neurological challenges like ADHD uh, bipolar th things like that and it's hard not to take that kind of as a self-worth hit when, when really what it's intended to do is just to kind of give a, a scope to kind of narrow things down a little bit and put them kind of in a set of, of symptoms that you can actually use as steps, you know? Like, I've been working on healing my disorganized attachment and my reactivity by focusing on the anxious attachment parts because that's where uh, my hypervigilance gets clicked in and I had a lot of inconsistencies a lot of extra adults around and uh, and, and a father who was uh, alcoholic and more family that was codependent so there was constant need to take temperature to to not be too big in certain moments and to not be too small in other moments and it was it was very confusing and it created that need to be constantly vigilant of where the next danger might be that's that's what hyper vigilance is what we want is just vigilance the which is the ability to predict rather than project and prediction is it's flexible like healthy boundaries you know you recognize there are going to be some good moments there are going to be some not so great moments like when you know that conflict might occur likely because someone else has a pain body that they're not facing which you can't force them to do and and you can't be in a constant state of, of crisis trying to avoid triggering them so you get to a point to where you're vigilant and you you recognize okay they're probably going to have a response to this and it might not be fun but it's not going to be the end of the world even if a fight occurs or uh, there's some not nice words passed etc and that's much more comfortable to not to not be lying to yourself um, in either direction because to assume that that conflict or contrast or a fight or anything is going to be so terrible or so awful we often actually end up instigating that very fight um, either by getting either becoming the aggressor um, or in reaction to some aggression we end up doing tit for tat aggressiveness and then we assume that if it continues on it's just going to become this like big horrible thing and it's going to hurt really bad or it's going to end something that we're not we don't want to end so we end up trying to cut it off and, and ho thinking that that is like a mature thing to do and sometimes it is um, it depends on the situation but sometimes it's actually good to allow conflict to play out and to get down to the the root of what the problem is because usually conflict occurs because we're not having uh we're not having conversations either with ourselves or with other people that could resolve things when it's calm and when it's easy and when it only takes five minutes and when we don't do that then things build up people feel unappreciated they they and if we're not talking about how we're feeling and that we're we're apprehensive or afraid of conflict coming up and they don't know that and they feel like they're just 
ignored or not valued or um, deprioritized. And, you know, that's something to work on also. But for, <laughs> for this moment in this video, we're talking about that hypervigilance. So it's important to, to look at that, that it's, it's not bad. That you have a, that you've been hypervigilant or reactive or disorganized. That was necessary for a very long time, both in childhood and in each relationship where those same patterns and cycles have been repeating themselves. They they were necessary in those moments before you realized you had a choice and that you did not need to be doing that. Now those responses are no longer necessary and they're not beneficial. They're actually creating worse situations for you and the way to get away from that is to have a more understanding about what it is what happened this is why so many people say it's so valuable to study your childhood it's not to go back and learn to to hate your family or to look at how many things you've done wrong it's to look at oh okay this is why I have fear of abandonment this is why I get hyper vigilant, and thereby this is how I can help reduce that in a in a pace that works for me, and to practice healthier boundaries, and to be to be comfortable with myself to to start to take things less personally, which is where you start to get into secure attachment. Somebody who is secure, like yeah, they still have feelings and responses, but they don't tend to blow things up. They don't tend to need a whole ton of boundaries and rules. They don't get so upset if they're not having like constant uh, good and or bad reactions with someone else. They're, they're comfortable. They don't take things so personally. They recognize that um, if somebody's not reaching out to them or not prioritizing them, they probably have some other things going on uh, that are taking up that time and that thought space where they, they probably would be dealing with it. Or even if you recognize that somebody is being avoidant of conflict or commitment or things of that nature rather than taking that as a self-worth hit of like oh they're just they're scared of me and I'm not scary and it's horrible that they're being this way with me instead it's it's like having grace for that okay I, I've been there and it's you know I, I have the choice and the ability to not have this dynamic with them but if I choose to I can not take it so personally and that's a really good place to go with anyone, whether it's someone, you know, maybe just run to run into them at the store, or you work with them every day, or you're in a relationship with them of some kind, is to recognize that that's what triggers are about. It's when you're feeling reactive, you're feeling triggered. And when you're feeling triggered, it's because it's, it's hitting a hot button in your pain body. Somewhere in there, that makes you feel unsafe and puts you in fight or flight mode, that survival mode. And when you can get to a place to where you can recognize, oh, okay, so this, these conversations with, let's say, person A, when there's potential that it might, there might be conflict or fine print or that it, it, it might change around, it's not that the conversation is bad to have. It's not that the other person is going to keep uh, testing me or changing the rules on me or attacking me. It's that, you know, spirit or my body, my subconscious, is showing me where my pain body is. You know, is it in being confused? Is it in the worry that once the rules are set, they'll change? You know, and then think back. How did that happen to you growing up? Where does it look the same? And then don't put that on the other person to change. Like, yes, you want to have healthy boundaries with them, but look at how you can transmute that trigger and say, okay, this is me being hyper vigilant about avoiding conflict. It's creating more conflict and it's building up and that's scaring me even more. So what I need to do is actually lean into the conflict. But I don't want to feel like, a, a, you know, an incredible jerk, which I felt like in the past. So I'm going to change my approach a little bit. Like rather than waiting for the other person to blow up at me, I'm going to start letting them know, you know, yes, this conversation